The most powerful banker in the world just died, and when you study his family, it becomes clear why people can't afford homes and college. The story goes back to the 1700s and a banker named Mayor Rothschild. And he made an amazing discovery that there was more wealth lending money to governments than individual people. And to stay with me, because this will explain why Gen Z can't afford anything. Rothschild would have five sons who he would send to five different countries across Europe to start central banks. Germany, Austria, England, Italy, and France. And by the early 1800s, the Rothschild family was funding both sides of the Napoleonic Wars, which was the real World War I. And funding both sides of wars would become part of the business model. Well, Napoleon would be defeated at the Battle of Waterloo, and the Rothschilds had gotten the news before everyone else. They knew that England won the war. Well, they start selling off all their English war bonds, and they make sure everyone could see them do it. And when everyone saw the Rothschilds selling their bonds, they started to sell theirs. They assumed that the Rothschilds had information that England was going to lose the war. And when everyone started selling their war bonds, the Rothschilds bought them back for pennies on the dollar. And later that week, when everyone else found that England won the war, the Rothschilds basically owned the country. And as Nathan Rothschild said, give me control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes its laws. The business model had become to get governments and people into debt. And when the Rothschilds saw a young America, they saw opportunity. And in 1816, they found their way into American central banking with the second bank of the United States. And your money would be worth even less today if Andrew Jackson hadn't come along and saved the country. He started what are known as the bank wars. He balanced the budget, paid off America's debt, and ended the charter of the second bank of the United States. And although an assassin was sent after Jackson, he would miss both shots and Jackson would proceed to beat him with a cane. And that's why Jackson is on the $20 bill. They're mocking him and they're mocking you and me. But 77 years later, the Rothschilds would take control of the American banking system with the passage of the Federal Reserve Act. That's what this book is about. It gave a small group of powerful bankers a monopoly over the printing of the American dollar. And for every dollar they print, they're paid back at interest. This is why the 16th Amendment was passed that same year, 1913. It established the federal income tax for the first time in American history. When they print this money, they get paid back at interest with our tax dollars. And there hadn't been a federal income tax for the first 137 years that America was a country. And these taxes go to paying back the bankers at interest, not the roads and the military like everyone thinks. It's usury, debt, interest. It's how you steal the wealth from the middle class of a nation. And they love the wars because they're getting paid back at interest. But every time they print that money, they're stealing from the future. It means your money is going to be worth less. It's why they had Lyndon B. Johnson push the Great Society, which made mortgages and college loans available to everyone, which was great for the boomers. But every time they took out those loans, it meant the price of housing and college would go up, up, up. So now no one could afford housing, no one could afford college without going into debt. The business model has always been to use usury to steal the wealth of nations, to control governments and to control people. All right, Ephesians 6 and 12, and we're gonna read it on the right here in the NLT. It says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Shalom, this is your brother Yuanathan. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right, be the blessing of election be upon your house today we're going to talk about the group of people who are pushing you know the spirit of the antichrist in earth the wicked that the bible speaks of okay there is an enemy to the nation of israel and everybody that's reigning in the earth and i put that video in the beginning of the lesson to give you some insight into who we're talking about and how they got in that position and ultimately how they got in that position is the lord allowed them to be successful 
in their so-called plights and their plans. Okay, the scriptures tell you in Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. But these families of people, because you know, that's just the Rothschilds would be, just be one family. You got the DuPonts, you got JP Morgan, you got the Rockefellers, which is basically the Western branch or the American branch of the Rothschilds family. But they're all tied in and on one accord to hijack the Lord's creation. They put a chip in everybody to, you know, uh, you know, you put that chip, that's like a digital all to take ownership over the people and make complete slaves of the people to establish that, that one world government where they extend their blessing because again there were two nations of people given worldwide dominion all right that was jacob and esau the difference is esau's dominion would be temporary and that's also another way you can prove that esau edom the so-called white man is you know esau all right because they've established themselves to have global dominion and there's, there's no real challenge to the Edomites ruling in the earth, okay? And there's only two nations who were, who were promised to have that kind of status. So by default, through prophecy, there it is, okay? Let's get into this, uh, the spirit of the Antichrist, because a common misconception in Christianity, uh, there's just going to be this one guy that arises up and, no, no it's, it's, it's a group of people. It's a race of people that are doing the bidding. Uh, on the left hand, the, the Lord's bidding on the left hand side and wickedness and that's what they're doing they're the antagonists in this movie but let's get two precepts that come to mind all right first John 2 and 16 point is in 18 it says for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but it's of the world and for those who are new when it's talking about the world it's not talking about the whole inhabitant earth here Okay, you got to look up this words in their original language that they were written in to get a deeper understanding of what's being spoken of. So you look up that word world here, it's going to be the word cosmos, which can be an orderly arrangement of people. Like, you know, you have the sports world, the music world, or it could be a government or an order or a status quo that's being met or people live up to. Okay, see here, let's leave these definitions right here. And you see the word cosmos in the Greek, New Testament written in the Greek, Old Testament written in Hebrew. You see that Jew, uh, G 2889, that G lets you know it's the Greek. When you're in the Old Testament, you look up words, it'll have the H there letting you know it's the Hebrew tongue. All right, now, start at one. It says, an appointed and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order or government. Okay, let's keep going down here. Ornament. Decoration, adornment, the arrangement of stars, the heavenly host, as the ornament of the heavens. Okay, then we jump down to the seventh definition, right? World affairs, the aggregate of things earthly. Okay, so you got to kind of expound and understand what's being said. Okay, the things of the world are not, you know, of the most high. Okay, verse 17, it says, the world passeth away. And we know it's not talking about the whole inhabited earth here because the scriptures tell us, I believe it's in Ecclesiastes. Let me go to it real quick. That the earth abides forever. So it can't be talking about the whole inhabited earth here. And this is just a little tangent. Okay. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. One generation passes away and another generation cometh. But the earth abides forever. Okay. Now let's go back to 1 John 2. There's a little tangent there for I'm trying to speak as though this is someone's first video that they watch because we always have new people coming in. Right. First John two and 16. All right. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And this is the point I wanted in 18 talking about that spirit of the Antichrist that these that the wicked are pushing. Little children, it is the last time we we're, we're coming up on the end of this age, the end of this dominion and rulership, and we're going to enter into Jacob or Israel's rulership right over the earth, which is going to be an everlasting rulership, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be on earth. Okay, that's why the Lord is coming back to establish his government on the earth. Okay? Verse 18, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, 
even now, there are many antichrists. There are many people who subscribe to this vibration that is contrary to the Lord, that subscribe to the vibration of the world. There's a whole nation of people pushing this agenda. And there are people of our own nation who subscribe to what these people are pushing. And that's the two thirds of our people who were prophesied also to be destroyed and left here. Okay, and have to be reset. All right, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. So it's not like you learned in the church, it's going to be just one guy. No. Whereby we know. That it is the last time. Okay. Then it starts to go into, you know, the, the Jakes and the churches that were flipping out and bugging out and, you know, leaving off from the ministry. They went out from us, but they were not of us because it wasn't their lot to be in it for the long haul anyway. For if they had been of us, they would have, uh, they would no doubt continue with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. All right. Just because somebody knows they're Israelite, man. Doesn't mean they're going to be one in conduct, you see. Now, back to this devil and how he's going to be moving up until the time that the Lord returns. <coughs> it's like it. Second Thessalonians verse three. And I'm going to read in the NLT here on the right for you all. <coughs> it says, don't be fooled by what they say, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God. And the man of lawlessness, the man void of righteous judgment, the man that decrees unrighteous decrees, all his laws and everything, all his infrastructure goes against what the Lord has commanded. OK. Isaiah 10 and 1, man, it, there's, there's a there's a there's a recompense for someone who moves like that in the earth. Uh, the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. OK, and he's even called the hammer of the earth. Verse four, he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God. All right. And every object of worship. And in the KJV, it says who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Rhetorical question here. Or that is worship. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, meaning that he has a God complex. He wants to be like the most high. And over there in the NLT on the right in verse four, it says claiming that he himself is God. And you have your guys like uh, uh, Charles uh, Cotton Swaps. I'm using code terms, but uh, his uh, his underling, Noah Yuval Harari, who openly made statements on the world stage with all the countries meeting, saying, uh, we don't need God. We can make our own water. God is dead. It just takes a while to hide the body, to, to pull people away from the Lord. That's basically what he was saying. We don't need God. We can make our own one. We are, we're God. That's basically what he was professing. Openly declaring war on the Most High, challenging him, challenging him for his throne. The pride. You see, who else is moving like that and speaking like that in earth? What nation of people? Verse five in the NLT here on the right. Don't remember. Don't you remember? That I told you about all this when I was with you. And you know what is holding him back. For he can be he can uh, be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly. So this vibration was already at work during Paul's time. Because who was in rulership when Paul was on the scene? The Romans. Who is Esau Edom? They, 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 that's who they descended from. The so-called white man today. Now, again, as you're listening to this video, this is not a black or white thing. White thing. Notice I'm saying so-called white man because the Bible deals with bloodline lineages. Okay? You have a lot of... The, the bulk of Israel are going to look like the so-called black, Latino, and Native Americans. But you're going to have Israelites mixed in amongst all these nations. Some are going to look like Moabites, Chinese people. Some are going to look like you know, uh, so-called Arabs, some are going to look like the so-called white man. And there are going to be some uh, Edomites that look like so-called black man. It's a, this is a spiritual thing. It's nothing that has nothing to do with complexion, so to speak. But we bring that out, what the Lord looks like, what his people look like for the sake of the healing of our people 
and as the nation of Israel is being healed and they, they come back to their identity and they realize, oh, we have a standard to live by, then the healing of the world takes place. So it is, you know, some people might look at it as a trivial thing, but it's actually very important for the healing of an entire nation of people that have it, that their identity was stolen, identity theft, and for them to repent because when they're back in the right frame of mind of who they are and walking uprightly, though the elect of that nation is going to call on the Lord and it's going to bring about uh, a righteous government being on the earth and eventually the betterment and the blessing of all nations. You know how they always talk about, oh, through Abraham, all nations will be blessed. Yeah, that chosen line that came out of Abraham is going to establish a righteous government in which everyone is going to benefit. Okay. All right. But back to the point here. Second Thessalonians two and uh, seven for this lawlessness is already secretly at work. And this is on the right in the NLT and will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness will be revealed and he's been revealed in this time. All right. By not only his actions, but through the prophets, the Lord's men, the Lord's whistle in the earth is being blown. And we're through the spirit. Right, using the Lord's words, we're revealing, hey, look at who this man is. This is who we're talking about. It's him. Inquisition is being made of him. He's being put on trial, which is why he wants to shut the internet down, which is why whenever somebody posts anything online now, you see that fact checking banner at the bottom of it. He's trying to control the narrative and and is 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 kind of spiraling out of control to where people don't believe him anymore. They're actually seeing him for what he is, which is the devil the Bible speaks of, as it's gonna say as we read on down. Verse eight again from the top, it says, then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Yahweh Shah will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. All right. And that's even more detailed in um, second Ezra 13 verse nine. This man will come to do the work of Satan. So there's a people upon the earth who's coming to do the work of Satan. There's not one man. We know that there's many antichrists and there's a nation of people uh, pushing this vibration and specifically the elites of the nation of the, the bankers that are that we keyed in on in the beginning of the video, the banking families. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs, their technology and miracles. You know, they got their, their heart machines. They got, you know, their spell casting through their media. They got the new AI where they could basically artificially make up any vision that they want and show it to you. They could take a, it could clone a man's voice, put an AI image up of him and make it as though he's saying things he didn't say, doing things he never did, being places he never was. So keep that in mind, too, as we as we uh, as things move forward here, there's going to be a great demonization of the prophets, of the Lord's men, of teachers, of anybody who opposes his his will. All right. Verse nine, this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those who are on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that will save them. So the people that uh, don't hearken unto this word, they're going to spiral into even further darkness in the days to come. Verse 11. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. How beautiful it is for us to be in the know about who our enemy actually even is. So you got the Freemasons, the lower luminaries of the nation that is pushing, you know, that Antichrist energy in the earth. And look what they're preparing for. They know that World War III is going to play out. They have provision and hideouts. Look at the caves they've dug. And look what they, they understand what's getting ready to play out according to Bible prophecy the same way we do. But they think they're going to override the will of the Lord and rise from the ashes and be that soul power that, you know, takes over the earth and sits on the throne forever. When again, Jacob was promised, you know, dominion forever, not Esau. In these caves, it speaks about it in scriptures. All right, Revelation 6, all right, uh, verse 14, it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, talking about the nuclear mushroom clouds, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, as you just seen. And said unto the mountains and rocks, 
Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and he shall be able to stand. So they're preparing. They have everything mapped out of how it's going to play out and, you know, what, where they're going to go and things are heating up. But it's already written that they would do that. They're in the trick bag. There's nothing they can do that that isn't mentioned. Their plans have already been, you know, soiled. And all we have to do is play our part because the victory for us, again, it's already written. Now, what we're waiting for him to come with, all right, is that MOTB, okay, to where you're going to need this particular mark to function within the society. That's what we're waiting on this devil to come with because that's when the Lord is going to really start to move and we're going to see, you know, uh, things start to ramp up exponentially and that heads of protection overtake the believers of the Lord's men. That's what we're waiting on. That's 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 the really the, um, the signal that we're entering into the climax of the movie. A doctor inserts the microchip between your thumb and index finger using a device similar to a syringe. Now these chips can actually be really helpful tools and they utilize the same technology used in phone payments. With this tiny device, your body essentially becomes a contactless key. It can open doors using sensors and can even start a car. They last anywhere from 10 to 20 years and can be removed with a small incision in the skin. People stop being fucking stupid, man. When it crashes this economy, man, this is going to be the new currency, man. You're going to have to put your right hand and your forehead out to go ahead and buy or sell in this economy, man. All right? Are you going to sell your soul to Satan or are you going to get your head fucking chopped off, man? That's the choices that's coming in these days, man. You can laugh and scoff, talk all the shit you want in your mind, but the Lord going to judge your ass, man. All right? This is a serious matter, man. It ain't no more time to be playing around with your people, man. Yeah, the beloved elder from the Charlotte camp. But yeah, man, you're going to be confronted with these choices. And if you don't have this mark, you're not going to be able to clock into work. You're not going to be able to start your there's you're not going to be able to start your car and go and come as you please. You're going to be made out to be someone who's, you know, against the moving forward of the world. And you're going to be demonized for it. You know, the whole pandemic thing with the jump shot that was just a trial run. And you see how the people who were just opposing were like, hey, I'm not really sure about that. How they were made out to be the scum of the earth. How much more so when, when they released this and they say, hey, man, they get everything back on track. Everybody has to come in and merge with this system so we can move things along. The people that aren't with it, man, they're going to be called everything in the book. And people are going to be swayed to, to, to look at those people as disposable. Uh, there was a quote a while back. I forget the guy's name. He said, cancel, cur cancel culture is just a prepping for um, for genocide. For for people that, that, that don't want to conform to a particular thing, cancel culture. Because people, if somebody says something that goes against what this devil has made, the, the status quo or the moral standard, people are okay with someone who has a varying opinion or deferring opinion to be ostracized, to disappear. People have become okay with that. Oh, he he said, what? This is his opinion? He doesn't, you know, he doesn't need to be, he, he get him out of here. It's just a dress rehearsal to make it okay in the minds of the masses for someone who doesn't, you know, agree with what's going on to, to be made to go away. You know, that's what's getting ready to come for those who are, who are gonna stick with the Lord. But at the same time, the scriptures promise us so the Lord, when he says something, he's going to uphold it. Those who serve him, they're going to eat. They're going to drink. They're going to be taken care of during that day. So you don't even have to worry as long as you're moving in faith and you're standing boldly in the Lord. He promised us that he's going to make sure that we're taken care of during that time. So there's no reason to trip about it. All right. Here we go. This is in the book of Isaiah. This is uh, Isaiah 65 and 12. Therefore, I number you to the sword. This is, these are those who have, you know, been in cahoots and go along with this agenda that the, 
the, the, the nation of Antichrist, the people that are conforming to this agenda. This is their destiny. Therefore, will I number you to the sword and ye shall bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. And the Lord's calling through his men in the earth right now. All right. Go to Proverbs 1, 20 on down. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry of sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right, man. So Abba Rauch's the lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha HaKodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. All right. May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom.